Hello everyone, this is day 30 of the 90 day YouTube sprint on signal analytics and we are at a milestone day, the first milestone day, which is the day 30 YouTube sprint review. We're going to do these at 30, 60 and 90 days at the end of it to share the progress, to, to share the results on this experiment that we're doing. Once again, we had some signals that organic YouTube was a potential new channel for us based off of the inbound requests that we got from other content. And so we're doing a 90 day test to see if we can capitalize on that and make that a successful and regular channel. So who am I before jumping into the actual content of this? I'm Dan Saavedra. I'm from Merger Data, the founder of Merger Data. We are a signal consulting firm, signal analytics consulting firm. We help you find the signals, the data points that tell you whether or not someone is likely to become a customer. And then we send all that data back into your CRM, help you identify opportunities and grow your revenue quarter after quarter. And so before we jump into the content, I've been going over some client results from two specific clients. We'll be adding more in the future. I've just been copying and pasting the presentation. So I've been leaving the same ones in there. But for this client on the left-hand side, we have our closed one deals. And then on the right-hand side, we have the total count of deals. And so you can see that with this client specifically, they had a really, really great offering. And when sales was creating deals, that means that it was a very high chance that they would close. But in the beginning, when we came in, they just weren't closing a lot of them. And so when we came in, we implemented signal analytics day one, you can see this jump from before signal analytics analytics was around to when they implemented it. And then the quarter after it had amazing growth as well, all while the actual total number of deals was not doubling itself. And so you can see we were getting up to four and 5,000 one deals per quarter for this company, bigger company, right? And at the same time, these the total number of deals created was increasing, but not doubling and definitely not by that much. So close rate was increasing, efficiency was increasing. These are the type of results you can get with signal analytics. It's not just pure opportunity growth it is also an increase in efficiency overall. And so before we get to the actual results, I want to share this timeline of what we've been implementing over these past 30 days, and then what we're going to be doing going forward. And so with the sprint, we're not just creating YouTube videos, these, these long form YouTube videos, we're also doing smaller things in between. And so on day zero, we launched YouTube only day 10, we started doing shorts. So we're trying to catch up with the current video that we're on the day 31, but we're just been posting two shorts per day. Sometimes we're doing three from a video, sometimes one, it varies, but we've been posting that since day 10. And so that's added into the exposure of this entire sprint. Day 15, we added the lead magnet, the B2B signal constructor tool, which I've been telling you about on every video. It's a great tool. We had great feedback from it already. And so, we, add, we added that at day 15. Day 20, we added in the podcast plus TikTok. So we've just been taking the audio version of these videos, posting them on the podcast apps. And then we've been taking the shorts that we've been creating since day 10 and posting them on TikTok. We're not doing anything with TikTok. I don't even think I've checked the metrics, to be honest. I don't expect much traction, but since we were making the YouTube videos or the YouTube shorts, we were just throwing it over to TikTok as well. Then day 30 here, so after this video, I'm gonna start posting on LinkedIn. A little bit different, it's not just gonna be a copy and paste, there'll be clips from specific videos, and then I'll be writing a longer form post on there. And so we wanna add in this extra channel. LinkedIn in the past, when we offered different services, way, way long ago, was a place that we used a little bit and saw some traction with. And so we just wanna do a, a multi-channel approach here to accentuate what we've been doing on YouTube, right? We're putting a lot of effort into these videos and now we wanna repurpose the content for specific platforms, get it to different audiences. And so that's what we're doing on day 30. And so then on day 45, we will be introducing a VSL. Right now, our homepage is pretty bland. It's pretty simplified. We haven't put a whole bunch of effort into optimizing that. It's been acting as just a landing page, a really simplified landing page. And so we'll have a VSL there real short three to five minutes to try to see if we can increase conversions from people who are visiting 
our website from these efforts. And then day 60, we're going to introduce cold email. I don't know what your opinion is about this. I'm looking forward to trying, trying it. The more presence that we have, this is our guest, the more presence that we have across channels, the better success we'll have with this cold email, especially around the VSL. And so after that, we don't know what we're doing. We're just going to day 90. Maybe we'll add in some additional things, but that's the plan going forward. Wanted to share that before we go on. This is a picture that I put into AI. I thought it was a kind of interesting one, asking it to show someone being bombarded from all different angles. And basically, I feel like with this approach that we're doing over the, the 90 days with all these different channels and reposting, we're really just overwhelming channels with content, right? Seeing if it sticks, seeing if what we're saying is resonating with our target clients, seeing what the results are from it. And so that's what this picture is. I just thought it was funny. So the good, let's get into the good. Remember, this is a small experiment. It's organic. You can see the numbers on our YouTube channel. Like we're not a giant YouTube channel by any means. And so for our videos, they don't get too many views right now. We're hoping that grows over time. The good is that we got four booked calls from people who have watched these videos. Some of them have come in through other channels and then or other methods, but the YouTube videos were one of the main reasons that they booked a call through self-reported attribution or through discussion on, on the call itself. And so this was a great sign. People are watching the video. It's helping them convert. It's not necessarily bringing them, bringing them in initially as a brand new channel, but it is a good sales asset. So that's a win. Two, three opportunities were generated from that. So three qualified opportunities. And then out of that, one customer close. So 33% close rate. It seems like we have a pretty good fit in terms of people who are seeing the videos and then influencing them to book a call. They are self-qualifying themselves to a degree or it's just targeting the right people. And so these are numbers are pretty small, so we can't really base too much off of this. We have to have more data first, but these were just the wins that we were experience, experiencing. For our deliverables and strategy got better. We've had all of these assets and content and work that we do with clients. And through this process, the planning, the creation of the presentations, the refinement of our deliverables to clients has really refined itself on all levels, really. We're so much clearer on what our deliverables are, which ones are having the highest impact, the problems that people are truly facing and want resolved immediately. And then the strategy around attacking those problems has gotten better. Presenting, building things, just as a continuous thought process around signal analytics, how it can impact businesses that we work with. So that's been a really good and unexpected benefit of this, right? People always say writing is a great way to think, and I agree with that. And this is another form of creation of writing, right? And so I, I really like this portion of it. And then five, target marketing website visitors. So there was a, it's a really weird wording actually. Our target market is visiting our website based off of our content. And so we can see this based off of the pages that they go to. There's all these visitor identification tools or de-anonymization de identification tools. And so we use a few of them. They vary in accuracy. But from what we can see, we are getting traffic from the people that we really want visit. And so now we need to work on optimizing that homepage. That's why we talk about the VSL. We'll also make other changes slowly, but we can see that the visitors coming to our website are more refined into our target. And so this, this is amazing. Like this is best case. Now we're work, working on an optimization problem for the website rather than worrying about who we're targeting with messaging initially. We'll see as traffic grows even further what that's going to look like, if it's going to stay the same. The neutral. So these we talked about in the very first video, they don't really matter, but I figured I'd put them out there because people care about this. I made this on day 29, so it might be different now, but subscribers grew from 1294 at the start to 1513 now. So in 30 days, not bad growth compared to the total size of our channel. We got 10,500 views. And so this included shorts and older videos. I didn't go into the exact details of which, which videos are actually getting the views. I would estimate based off of our trends, the 30 days prior, I think was like 3000 ish views. So I think a lot of that is from the newer shorts and videos. 
that we've been publishing. So this is good. And then we also had a 50% increase in overall website traffic, all from YouTube related channels. So that's specifically for the YouTube traffic. We had a 50% increase overall. To give you an idea of the scale, that's in the, the hundreds per month. So it's not that big, but we're having hundreds of people visit from YouTube, from our shorts, from other videos, stuff like that. So not too bad. Those don't really matter. Not going to really make decisions off of that. The bad one customer. So this was also a good, this is bad because it's lower than we expected. We were hoping to have a little bit more success. I think our expectations were just set too high and one customer wasn't what we were expecting after 30 days, but I think that's just being greedy to be honest Two, many videos aren't getting eyeballs. And so if you, if you look through our, our, uh, long form videos specifically, you'll see that at the time of this video being published, a lot of the videos were in the like seven to 25 views range, which isn't bad in itself. As long as the people who are viewing them are the target, right? And they are human beings and we're excited that we had people watch our video. We see the amount of time that they watch it. And we really appreciate the people who stop by and follow us video after video. I can see that as well to a degree, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's our hope that we get more eyeballs on it. So we get better data. We can see truly what the trends are. These are two small data sets to make real decisions off of. And so these were just lower than expected results for the first 30 days especially with the consistency that we're posting. And so we're hoping over these next 60 days that the multi-channel approach is gonna lend more eyeballs to the YouTube channel and then obviously get us impressions on other platforms as well. But like I talked about in the first video as well, our sales cycle is longer. It takes a longer time to convert people from very first impression to actually becoming a customer. I, don't, I haven't looked at our recent numbers since that video 30 days ago, but I would expect real results to be showing at the 60 day mark to allow the sales cycle to proceed so we can have some close, some more close loss and close one opportunities. So that's pretty much it there. So next steps, tell me what you want. I would love to make videos about specific problems you're facing that you haven't gotten answers to. If you can comment them, send me an email, submit a form somewhere. I don't care how you do it. Let me know what you're looking for, what the biggest problems are for you in your current position at your business and what an ideal situation would look like. And then we'll make a video on whether or not signal analytics can address that, the steps to go through it and all the good details that go along with it. So as always take one action. I want to put this up here. Thank you to everyone who has done these so far. We see the likes we see, I think there has been one comment, but we saw the one comment and and responded. We can see shares though. There's a lot more shares going on behind the scenes. I don't know if you can see that as a viewer, but people are sharing these. So we really appreciate that. And then going forward, follow the posts on LinkedIn. So you can search for Dan Saavedra on LinkedIn. You'll see my face, follow me, send me a connection request. If not, this is my URL for my profile, linkedin.com slash in slash Dan Saavedra. And you'll see the post there with clips of video and some bigger takeaways overall. And so next videos, a top roadblock marketing leadership is facing based off of survey data, that, survey data that we went over in the last video, we're going to take the top roadblock that CMOs are facing and talk about how to resolve that. So as always subscribe on YouTube or via the link in the description, if you want the free tool, I'm Dan Saavedra from Merger Data. Thanks for watching.